Chapter 5 Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in times past, when Saul was king over us, thou wast he that ledest out and broughtest in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king and to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter, and smiteth the Jebusites, and the lame, and the blind, that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort, and called it the city of David. And David built round about him Milo and inward. And David went on, and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. And Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons, and they built David an house. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem, after he was come from Hebron, and there were yet sons and daughters born to David. And these be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shemua, and Shobab, and Nathan, and Solomon, Ibhar also, and Elishua, and Nepheg, and Japhia, and Elishama, and Eliada, and Eliphelet. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king of Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And David came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. And the Philistines came up yet again, and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the top of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Uh, a couple of things in this chapter that you might not be aware of. Uh, at this particular point in time, although Joshua may have conquered uh, the Jebusites, who, uh, who basically were in what we now call the city of Jerusalem. Uh, very early on, at the time of David, it was, uh, it was basically a city of the Jebusites, one of the tribes that was supposed to have been cleaned out of the land, but wasn't. And so David, now, now the interesting thing was, although Jerusalem was about halfway north and south, and almost halfway east and west in all of Israel, it wasn't a city that belonged to any of the tribes. And so David selected it to be his capital, and he went up to Jerusalem to attack it. And the, uh, the city was so well defended, the Jebusites thought, that they basically taunted David and said that he would have to overcome the blind and the lame who were defending it. Now, it wasn't defended by blind and lame people you wouldn't necessarily understand that message from the way it's written. 
But what they're saying is that the city's so well defended that if all they had was blind and lame people, they could keep David's army out of there. What they didn't realize was that David knew of a way in. And there was a, in 18, 1867, about 150 years ago almost, there was a water conduit, a, a, um, a channel, drilled, not well, I guess they didn't drilled, they chopped it through the rock so that they could get, they could lower buckets and get water from a spring and haul it up for the people in the city if there was a time of siege. And what David did was he offered a reward for anybody who could go through the gutter, which is what they, he called it, and this was big enough for people to go up and down in, a little tight, but big enough for people to go up and down in. And because of that, they were able to get into the city and capture it and make that the capital city. And no sooner had he done that, it appears as though the Philistines heard about it and they came up and they dealt with that. And then they come up again. And the Philistines basically were there as a plague on anybody and everybody that they possibly could be because they would come to try and steal the grain harvest. They would come and try and steal the grape harvest. They would come and try and steal the olive harvest. It was easier for them to steal than it was to grow it themselves. Although they lived on the coastal plain and it was very fertile, stealing food was a whole lot easier than growing food. And they were quite prepared to do that. That's the kind of people they were. And so uh, now, if, when it talks about David going into the hold, we're not exactly sure on the time frame here, but the hold would basically be a secure place. If the Philistines came up before David captured Jerusalem, then the, it would have been the cave at Adullam, that, that's further south, that David would have hidden into. If it had been, uh, or retreated to for safety, <clears throat> if it had been after, then there were places... Uh, in the hill, in the mountain that Jerusalem was built on that were considered secure. And David would have gone down there just as a retreat from so that if they did break into the city, he would have safety there and be able to attack from there. And so that's what that part was about. Things start to get really interesting now.